everybody, Nick Dingle here again for the third part of our Super Mario Bros tutorial in Construct 2. This time around, we're going to get Mario animating through our event sheets, but more specifically, we're just going to get the little Mario, small Mario I should say, moving between his idle animation, his running animation and his jumping animation. It's going to take us a little bit to do that, but before we even start attacking the event sheet, I want to insert a couple of objects that we're going to need throughout all of our Mario programming. So we'll just get it out of the way now. We're going to put these objects in our miscellaneous folder and they're objects that are available to your entire project inside your event sheets but are never ones that you would ever drag into your level. So I'm going to right click on the misc folder, I'm going to insert a new object and I want you to click on function and then just click insert. I don't want you to name him because you only add these guys once and they're available to your entire game. And as I said before, this isn't something you can drag onto your um, layout and use that way. Okay? It's just something you use in your event sheet. So I'll explain function later on when we have to use him. We won't use him in this video though. The second one I want you to insert in MISC as well is the keyboard. Okay? And this allows us to interact with the keyboard in our event sheets, detect what keys have been pressed, things like that. Again, like function, you insert him, he's available to the whole project, not something you would drag onto your layer. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a whole separate event sheet just for Mario, okay? because he's going to have enough programming on his own. We don't want it muddled up with Goombas and coins and lives and things like that. So what I want you to do is right click on event sheets folder up here, click add event sheet and funnily enough name it Mario. We're really complicated with the naming in this video series aren't we? Alright, before we do any programming in the sheet I want to double click and open up my event sheet one. And you may notice obviously there's no events in these at all yet. But what I want to just emphasize quickly, if I click on level one on the right here, it says event sheet, event sheet one. And the, what this means is that only event sheet one is active when the game starts, okay, or well, when level one starts. What that sort of brings a problem because then our Mario event sheet is never touched. So what we need to do is we need to have event sheet one load up our Mario event sheet, which is really easy to do. I want you to right click anywhere in the gray stuff, click include event sheet, and there's our Mario event sheet. So just click OK. And what this does is it sort of daisy chains your event sheet. So when level one loads, it's then going to load event sheet one, which will in turn load the Mario event sheet. So we can actually close event sheet one now because we're done with him. All right. The next thing I want to introduce to you is an idea of groups. Okay. Now, if you've ever watched my previous videos, even my Pong and my Breakout ones, we ended up with a fair bit of events and actions all just jumbled together. Okay, groups are a way of grouping those events and actions together. All right? You can use them a bit more advanced, and we will later on, but right now we're going to use it just to organize excuse me, our events and our actions together. I want you to right click on the gray, just like we did previously, and this time we're going to click Add Group, and we're going to give it a good name, and we're going to call this Mario Animations. Okay? A place for all the events and actions for Mario's animations. Okay, so the idea is any code that we have to do with changing Mario's animation is going to go inside this group. Yeah, and it's really easy to organize things. Now the reason I called it Art Mario Animations rather than just animations is that the group names are for the whole project. Okay, so if I just called it animations I wouldn't be able to use that group name again anywhere else. That's why we put Mario animations. Later on we might have coin animations, Goomba animations and things like that. So you keep it specific to what you're doing here. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do, all the code is going to go underneath that group. So we can't just click add event because what that'll do is it's going to add the event outside the group. To easily add the event in you just right click on the group name. We're going to go add and then we're going to go sub event just like so. Right. The first thing that we're going to add in is we're going to check if we're allowed to control Mario. Remember we had a boolean on Mario which is called is active. And if is active is true, the player is in full control. As soon as is active becomes false, you're not allowed to control Mario anymore. So the first thing we're going to do is add that check in there to see if Mario is active. And then all of our animation code is going to go underneath that. So the is active variable is inside Mario. So we're going to go to Mario's sprite. Just notice how that actually matches up to our folder structure. That's another reason you organize things, because it's easy to find all your objects in your game. Click on Mario, click Next, and we're going to find the event that we want. And the event we want is down here with the instance variables. 
And more specifically, it's is Boolean instance variable set? So if you read the description up the top again, test if a Boolean instance variable is true. So we're checking if something is true. So specifically, if we click on that and go next, we want is active to be true. Clicking done will show you exactly what we've done here. I'm just going to stretch that out. So Mario is active. And then all the code is going to go underneath that. Okay. And the way we add the code is the same way we added the sub event in uh, the group. But this time we're going to right click on the left hand part of our event. Now what I mean by that is when I right click on this part, that's what you call a condition. And you'll notice we don't get any options for adding a sub event. So what you do is you right click on that little part here that's not selected at the moment. You go add a sub event. And now what we're going to do is we're going to attack. When you click right, Mario needs to look to the right. When you click left, Mario needs to look to the left. Okay? And there's a really, really easy built-in way to do that. It's called mirroring. But what's going to trigger that off is the key presses on the keyboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is type keyboard in the search bar up here. Okay? It's already come up. I'm going to hit enter to select it. And the one we want is when the key is pressed. So when they press left, we're going to mirror Mario around. So let's click that. What key is it? You simply click that box and you press the left arrow on the keyboard. OK, and then click Done. OK, so if Mario is active and the left arrow is pressed, then we want to mirror Mario. So the action is Mario. I can just type Mario up there, by the way. OK, and just type in Mirror. And there it is, Set Mirrored. And the state should be set to mirrored, because the other option is not mirrored, which he'll be facing to the right. Because not mirrored is normal, mirrored is the opposite way around. Okay, so mirrored is flipping uh, around the vertical. So looking left and right. If you did, um, sorry, mirrored is, yeah, flipping. There's another option called flipped, which would go upside down. Okay, so his feet would be on his head. But that's just a little point. Now, it's good to test your code. Always good to test, so let's hit play, make sure it works. I'll just close that. Click left, there we go, but he's not flipping back. So we're going to quickly add the code for that. So again, it's going to be a sub-event of is active. Most of our code is going to be a sub-event is, is active. You right-click that part, add sub-event. Notice how it says S there? That's the shortcut for it, the S key. And I'm going to start using that from now on. All right, keyboard. Okay, on key pressed. The key is the right this time, so click, right, done. And then we can do the same action as this one, but we're going to set Mario to not mirrored. Okay, if that was too quick for you, please pause the video and catch up. But right now, I'm going to hit play and make sure this works. Works perfectly. Okay. So that's it there. Now the next thing we need to do is add in those animations, okay? So if Mario is small, we need to swap between his idle, running, jumping animation. Again, it's going to be a part of is active, all right? It's going to be another sub-event of this guy. It's going to be a little bit confusing because first of all, we need to check if Mario is small. And then his small animations are going to go under that. In the next video, we're going to do if he's big and do his big animations under that. But for right now, I want you to right-click here. Oh, no, I've already broken my promise. I'm going to use the S shortcut now. So if you click there, press S, it automatically adds a sub-event. Okay, we need to check Mario's is big Boolean. So just like we did is active. So let's go Mario, check the instance variable, is big. But you may have noticed there's already a problem with that. Because if you look at this, this is saying if Mario is active and Mario is big, we don't want to check if he's big, we want to check if he's small. We want the opposite of big, okay? And the way to check the opposites of something is to invert, okay? To invert is another way of saying make opposite. So what I want you to do is to right click where it says is big and click invert. The shortcut for that is I on the keyboard, by the way. So now that reads is active, not is big. So really, it just means he is small for the moment. And that's pretty much it. Now we can add our actions and all of our other events for if he's running, if he's doing all that kind of stuff. So let's do the running first because that's a pretty easy one. Now all of this code is going to go under here because this is all to do when we've got a small Mario. So right, or click on the left part here, first event number five, click the S on the keyboard, and let's go to Mario. We're going to check if he's moving, and there's a really easy event for that. Underneath the platform behavior, we've got is moving. 
So if he's active, if he's small, and if he's moving, all we're going to do is set his animation, so Mario's animation specifically, set his animation to running. Okay? So this is really simple to do. To change his animation, you just need to write in the name of the animation. That's why we named all those animations really specifically and didn't leave it as default animation one, two, three, etc. What we're going to do is just type in a quote mark over the top what was already there. And you'll see it's got every single animation on our Mario sprite. So you're just going to find the one you want. You can either double click on it or you can come down with the keyboard and press enter. And it types it in for you. Click done. And the way that reads is if the platform is moving, set his animation to running. Hit play. Test him out. There he is. Mario's running around for us. You'll notice how he stops and he doesn't go back to his idle animation. So we need to fix that. And when he's jumping, he's sort of flapping his wings crazily. So we need to fix that too. All right, let's go into the jumping part now. Again, a sub-event of number five. So click on that bad boy. Click S. Go to Mario. And you want is jumping. All right, and then set his animation to you can probably guess, small jumping. Set animation, small jumping. Just like that. Give it a test. Running, jump, run. You can see it's changing his animation, but when he comes back down, when he's falling, okay, he's sort of flapping his wings again. He's a bit scared, he's about to hit the ground. All right, so what we need to do there is when he's jumping, we set the animation to jumping. When he's falling, we set the animation to jumping. Okay, so we could either do this the, the long and the easy way. We could add another sub event, you know, the same way we've done here, set the animation to small jumping, or we can do something a little bit more complicated just here. And that's what I'm going to do today. What I want you to do is right click on this condition and we're going to add another condition. Shortcut C, by the way. Go to Mario. Let's go to falling. Whoop, can't spell. Is falling. Okay. Right now, this is a little bit incorrect. Right now, it's saying that when Mario is jumping and falling at the same time, set his animation to jumping. But really, he can't be doing both of these at the same time. So what you do is you right-click on the left part here of number seven, and you make it an all block. So if he's jumping, set it to jumping. If he's falling, set it to jumping. Okay, it can be either one of these conditions now. Once again, make sure you test your program. Make sure it's working. And there you go. Last thing, let's go back to idle, okay? When he stops moving, we're going back to idle. And we're going to use this invert thing again. So click on number five, click S for a sub-event, people. Mario moving. I know, again, sounds stupid, but we're going to invert it. So you're going to right-click on platform is moving, invert it, which means platform is not moving. And we're going to set his animation. Mario, set animation, small, I can't spell. Small idle. All right, one more test. There you go. He's stopping, flipping, running, and jumping. Make sure you save your stuff, everybody. We're going to continue in the next video where we're going to worry about Mario's running speed because I'll show you, I'll talk about the tweaks there. We're going to do some skidding and then we're going to have a look at the big animations from there. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.